I welcome you to worship this morning at the Congregational Church of Booth Bay Harbor. During this worship series during Eastertide, we invite you to come and sit with us around the fire. And our worship begins this morning with a prelude. Welcoming us to worship today, and Austin's haircut is almost as short as mine. We are grateful that all of you are with us this morning as we make a space to gather around the fire, looking back to this past week, looking forward to uh, what lies ahead of us, and taking this time to pause. Here in Booth Bay Harbor, it is a gorgeous day, and on my bike ride into church this morning, yellow and pink and purple and white buds and flowers everywhere. 
and a good Sunday to stop and remember and give thanks for all who have had an April birthday. And if that's you, this song is for you. this morning that Ron Ross, co-chair of our church's search committee, um, is here with an update from the search committee. Good morning. I bring greetings this morning from my co-chair, Mary Ann Reynolds, and all the members of your search committee. I'd like to take just a few minutes to give you a bit more insight into the search process as we seek our next settled pastor. At this stage in a search, there are really two things in play. First, a congregation's search committee actively seeking a new minister, that's us. And second, those ministers who are possibly interested in serving our church. So how do these two entities learn about one another? We learn about each candidate in a couple of ways. We, the search committee, first receive ministerial profiles from the main UCC conference. Think of the conference as a clearinghouse. Interested ministers send their profile to the main conference, which then sends it on to us. This profile is in many ways a complete resume including references. Following in-depth study of the ministerial profile, the search committee then explores other resources. We check out their church website, we watch their services, we listen to sermons, we read their blog, we even check out Facebook. All this is to decide whether to invite the candidate for a Zoom interview. On the flip side, each minister learns about us by reading our church profile. With great appreciation to the profile committee for such a wonderful document, our church profile clearly explains who we are and what we are seeking in our next pastor. And you can be sure that each candidate is also checking us out online. They're visiting our website, they're reading our newsletter, and probably watching our services. A few months ago, you may recall that Peter invited us to submit stories for a Lenten booklet. As a next step in our search process, the search committee will be sending the resulting booklet, Holy Vessels, to those candidates who seem like a good fit with our congregation. Thank you to everyone who contributed to this booklet. What a wonderful way for a candidate to get a real sense of the people sitting in the pews every Sunday. Or maybe I should say the people gathering at home every Sunday for worship. Your search committee continues to meet two hours every Wednesday afternoon, and we ask for your continued prayers as we go about this holy work. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. And let's continue to just keep all of our search committee uh, in our hearts and prayers during this time and, uh, and all of the candidates who are wondering about and considering um, a ministry here with you. This Easter tide, we are uh, continuing our worship series all about the Spirit's fire and how God comes to us in the presence of fire um, that we will see in a particular way in a few weeks on May 23rd on Pentecost Sunday. And this Sunday, we continue that journey. Kathy Billis painted this beautiful picture, that's our um, slide for today, of a gathering of this congregation um, a couple decades ago out behind the church, 
winter solstice, time of a great bonfire, and singing of Christmas carols. A time to look back, perhaps, and remember on that darkest night of the year, all that had gone before, and a time to look forward to all that was coming in this season as the light was rising more and more during the day. And that's what this Sunday is all about. A time to remember and look back and a time to remember and take that memory as a way to help us think about and move forward. For today's service, we are gonna be celebrating communion. And if you haven't got so, this is a good time to go and get a cracker or a piece of bread, um, some juice, milk, water uh, to share so we can have communion together. And it's a day it might be helpful for you to bring a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. Now again, would be a good time to go and gather those things as we begin our worship, grateful for this time of being together. Come, let's sit around the fire and let us worship God. Please join me in a prayer of invocation. Gracious God, as spring burst forth with flowers flames of color against the background of green, we give thanks for the promise of a new season, and especially for the hope of gathering to get together again as a congregation. Be with us in this hour as we gather here and in our homes to worship you. Glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.
It's been 40 years, 40 years of wandering in the desert since Moses led them out of captivity in Egypt onto this promised land that God said was out there somewhere. And here they are at the crest of the hill, looking over this land of promise it's taken them a whole generation to get to so many who have died along the way. And here we are, looking over at it. But before we can just run down the hill and run into that land of promise, Moses pauses us here on the hilltop to remember, to look back and remember over these 40 years all that's happened and how God has been present with us, even in those times when we thought God was nowhere to be found. I mean, how God showed up there in that bush that was burning, that made Moses turn aside from his everyday work and to go and to see, and in the stepping aside to go and to see and to hear again, God's call and need for him to use this joy he had, this joy for justice, this joy for equality, this joy for fairness, to use it to be a leader, to lead his people to freedom, to tell a new story. I mean, that same fire, that same fire of God's presence that led the people out of Egypt, out of slavery, into the unknown of the desert, right up there to the edge of the Red Sea. And that same fire that turned and then moved behind the people, encouraging them, urging them forward to step out into the unknown of the future that is always before us knowing that God has our back, needing us to step in and live out our call. And it's the same God that shows up today, the same God that Moses wants the people to remember. Remember that day when Mount Sinai was all smoke because God had come down on it as fire how smoke poured from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain shuddered in huge spasms. The trumpet blasts grew louder and louder. How Moses spoke and God answered in thunder. God descended to the peak of Mount Sinai and God called up Moses to the peak and how Moses climbed up. Well, it's been 40 years since that day in the story, 40 years later, and Moses just wants them to remember, before they run into the promised land and all that's before them, to remember so that they can move forward. So listen then, as our story continues, from the book of Deuteronomy, Chapter 5, and Moses called all Israel together, and he said to them, Attention, wake up, listen. Listen to these rules, these regulations, these ordinances, these statutes that I am delivering to your listening ears today. Listen, learn them live in them. God, our God, made a covenant with us at Horeb. And God didn't just make this covenant with our parents, with our ancestors. God made it also with us, with all of us right here, right now, who are alive today. God speaks to you personally, here and now today, out of the fire of the mountain. 
At that time, I stood between God and you to tell you what God said, and you were afraid, remember, of the fire, and you wouldn't climb up the mountain. And God said, I am the God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Have no other gods but me, no carved gods. Don't use the name of God in vain or frivolously. Take a Sabbath, one holy day of rest a week, Respect your father and your mother. Don't murder, no adultery, no stealing, and no lies about your neighbor. And don't cover your neighbor's wife or their land or their donkey or nothing, nothing that belongs to your neighbor. Those are the words. These are the words that God spoke to the whole congregation on the mountain. How God spoke to them in a tremendous voice from a fire and cloud and dark mist. Remember? And then that was it. No more words. And then Moses wrote them on two slabs of stone. And I offer them again, here and now, to you. For the word of God in scripture, and for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Let's join together in a prayer. God of fire and God of presence, God of light and life, God of power and might and strength and God of the quiet whisper. Be here with us in and around this fire as we make this time to listen to your voice, to remember where we've come from, so that we might know better how to get where we are going to. 
your promise and your hope, your love and your grace that are always with us and always before us. Amen. Well, it's been a big week, a big week for me at least. I had my second vaccine on Wednesday morning. And after being on the other side of recovering from my second vaccine, I've got to tell you, it really is such a wonder and such a gift to look back and just to think about all that this year has taken to get us to this place. I mean, all of the scientists and caregivers and healthcare workers um, that have been working so hard to help get vaccines to us. And if you haven't got your vaccine, I hope that you have it scheduled and we'll be able to get that soon. It's such a time of in between. And as we gather here this morning, there's just spiraling COVID cases breaking out in India, South America, here in Maine, cases on the rise still and people dying this past week and people in hospital. It's It's such a time of spring here in Maine. We had a big night this week. A big night, which in Maine means that it was just warm enough and we had just that rain that we've so needed that it makes for a big night, which in Maine terms means a big migration of wood frogs, and yellow spotted salamanders and toads and other frogs to the vernal pools. Those places that I just used to walk by and thought, well, there's water in the woods and a bunch of brown leaves. But in fact, this great spring embryo of life. We had a big night here in this past week in Maine. My bird watching friends tell me that it is a time of a great migration of birds, these neotropical birds, I think they call them. All I know is that on my bike ride into church this morning, just everywhere around me is the sound of birds singing. What about you? Have you paused this week? Or what it might it mean to just pause right now and just take in, perhaps just listen to or see this new life that's coming all around us and within us. I took a time before my vaccine this week to go on a nature walk we went to a vernal pool, which I'd never even heard of a vernal pool before moving to Maine. We walked out into the woods and we came across one of those places of water in the woods that, as I said, I just would have walked by and said, oh, water in the woods and brown dead leaves and twigs. Well, our guide walked into the water with her big boots and her white bucket pushed it into the water and pulled up this amazing egg sack that big of yellow spotted salamanders. Just incredible. I mean, I have never ever seen something like that before. I would have walked by and never ever seen it. But as we marveled at this and the little tadpoles coming out of it, we all looked around and we could see them here and there and all around the pool. It was just incredible. Have you stopped? Have you noticed? Have you seen what's happening around us? 
The other day I was out for a trail run and I just stopped right on the trail. And I asked my running friend, what is that? And he said, I think it's a wood thrush. If you've ever heard a wood thrush, I must say, stop you dead in your tracks. Wow. Have you stopped? Have you listened? Have you heard? Sometimes it's hard to stop because all that stuff happening out there, I mean, these wonders, these sounds, this singing, it feels and can feel a very far place from this dead, desolate, depressed place within. It's a hard time of year, I know, for some of us this springtime. A hard time to see all this new life out there that we can't see or feel or recognize anywhere within. Spring's a time all the more that we really do need each other. I mean, to lean in around the fire and just make space for each other in all of the different ways that we come in a springtime of change. And this year, of course, we are so in it. In so many different ways, particular and as a community. So looking forward to May 30th, our anticipated time of our first time of being back for public worship together. Looking forward, some of us to getting together with family and friends, receiving or getting a hug from a child that we haven't had in over a year, seeing parents that we haven't seen for over a year. In the story today, it's been 40 years. And perhaps this year we kind of get that story a little bit more. It's been a year and what, four months of this. Maybe we get wilderness a little bit more. It's not something that's one of those Bible terms from way back then, but it's something that we know and we know what it feels like 40 years of wandering between what was into this promise of what might be. And there we are on the cusp of the hill and just like they felt then, I imagine we, all of us, in different ways feel now, well, let's just get on with it. Let's just get down the hill. Let's just get this over with. Let's just get this through. It's been a hard season in different ways for all of us. And especially, especially for some of us in our country and in our world especially for some of you. Last week, as I was recovering from my second vaccine, I watched a movie. I haven't watched a lot of movies lately this year. I love going to the movies. I don't much like watching a movie at home. But in recovering from the virus I, uh, or my vaccine, I watched News of the World, and in it there's this wonderful little line where the young girl Joanna says, in, or we have to, in order to move forward, you have to remember, in order to move forward, you have to remember. And what she means by that, of course, is in order to move forward in what? In really ways of life and ways of open heartedness, of, of courage, of hope, of love. You first have to remember. And remembering can be very hard. And why we can all keep it out like this. Perhaps in the story, 
Moses recognizes that. He knows that remembering's hard. We don't just do it. We have to be invited into it. Of course, the thing about remembering is no one can make you remember, as no one finally can really make you do anything. You can't preach your way into telling people or telling ourselves that you have to go and remember. But perhaps all we can do is like Moses did, is just make a space. Like we make a space this morning around a fire to remember. You know, after World War I, in the 20s and 30s, they built 170,000 monuments to World War I in France. 170,000 monuments to World War I that had taken so many lives, destroyed, changed so much in their country. There's not one monument in France to the pandemic of 1918 a pandemic that took the lives of 50 to 100 million people throughout the world. Wars, maybe they're easier to remember. They have a clearer, what, beginning and a middle and an end. Pandemics, we're learning. They come as a panic, they come as a crisis, they come unprecedented. And as we move our way through, we just want to forget them and move on and move back to what was. But let's make a little monument today or make the possibility of a little monument today and do some remembering. I was gifted the other day with four little questions that I'd invite you now and in this week ahead to wonder on with me. But first and right now, just to think about for yourself, what is something that you did before the pandemic that you're looking forward to doing again? Hmm. What's something that you did before the pandemic that you're looking forward to doing again? My first Monday morning here in Booth Bay Harbor, early February of last year, I met Sandy and Eric Hackinson at the Y. And Eric said to me, you should come to our 5.30 gym class. I thought, that sounds awfully early. But you know, because of Eric's invitation, I ended up going to that class. I made friends. <laughs> I made friends that I still run with and been able to this year. I miss friends from that class. I look forward to going back to that class. I look forward to going to the library. I love browsing in the library. What's something that you did before the pandemic that you're looking forward to doing again. Perhaps you might write that down. What's something that you started during the pandemic that you hope to continue? Hmm. What's something that you started during the pandemic that you hope to continue? For me, it's Sunday afternoons at five o'clock. Every Sunday afternoon at five o'clock for the past year, my family gathers together from around the country for a Zoom call. It's something we've never done before. As my parents said, they've never been as in touch with their grandchildren as they are now. No, I don't think, I don't want our five o'clock Zoom call to change. I don't want that to end. 
What's something that you did before the pandemic began that you want to let go of? Huh. What's something that you did before the pandemic began that you want to let go of? For me, perfection. I love planning. I'm a great planner. And when I came here, I had all sorts of plans for what I was going to do and invite you to do in this place. All those plans went up in the air. What I've learned this year that I don't want to let go of is the need to jump in and do it. To just learn in real time. That's been a real gift of my life with you this year. Something that you did before the pandemic began that you want to let go of. I want to let go of perfection and over planning. I want to jump in and learn in real time. And finally, what's something you started during the pandemic that you're happy to stop? What's something that you started during, doing during the pandemic that you're happy to stop? And it reminds me to write what we're going to now. And it's communion. I miss passing bread. I miss the sharing of bread with you, with others, with a hungry world. I want to pass the bread again. I'll send these, these questions out to you midweek in my midweek email. I ask you to wonder on them. I ask you to take them. Wonder what would happen if you took them to the conversations with your family, your friends, your committee meeting, your group gathering. It would be a gift if we made a little monument and we remembered and we shared. And now during this song, I invite you to take this time and to think on those questions and to remember so that we can move forward in all of the ways of life and hope and love that God is calling us to live and be and dreams in us to do. So may it be. Children.
Do you remember the story? It was in the afternoon after the women had come to the tomb and found it empty. It was on that afternoon that two of Jesus' disciples were walking along the road to Emmaus and a stranger came and joined them. As the close of the day came and they were walking towards their home, they paused. And they called out to the stranger who was walking further down the road to come back and to come in and to sit with them and break bread and share bread together. For the day was now coming to a close. And the stranger took a loaf of bread and blessed it broke it and shared it with them and their eyes were open and they recognized the risen Christ there in their midst there in the breaking of the bread as we take our bread in all of our separate places and in this time and place together. May our eyes be open to the Christ who is all around and among us and within us, the body of Christ. And as we remember May the sharing of this cup be a remembrance, a present reminder of God's love and blessing with you, with me, with us all, so that we might be a blessing to the world. Prayer is a good time to just pause and to make a time just to pause and remember what otherwise we are so busy running on about that we don't take time to just pause and remember. So let's make a prayer time together. Just to pause and remember together, all of us, first, what we're thankful for today. I mean the people that come to mind as we say and think thankful and gratitude and gift and joy. It brought a smile to my day seeing Lena Minzner on the cover of the Booth Bay Register this past week in a play at the YMCA. It gives me a smile and an encouragement to think about our teachers and staff that we are honoring this week. It's been a challenging year for all who work in our schools. And I give thanks for all that you give, have given and give again tomorrow uh, to support our children and our families and our communities. I am grateful and uh, share joy with Steve Morin and Jen Ross as they shared news that Steve has completed his radiation treatment for his continued care and healing and presence with both you, Steve and Jen. Our hearts and our prayers are with you. A good time to pause and remember our concerns that we bring. Bill Burge died this past week and I had a good chance to talk to Sue a couple of times and she's both remembering and looking back to what has been a long goodbye and so aware of all of the ways she is experiencing just grace along the way and 
appreciates your notes and your prayers with her and her family. Kathy Shepard brings prayers for April Shepard, who's dealing with some serious medical issues. It's for Kathy and Richard, for all of their family and loved ones. Many of us know Henry Wyatt, and Henry's been in and out of the hospital, and our prayers are with Henry and with Margie. The headlines in the news are the global coronavirus viruses, um, co global coronavirus cases are surging in India and South America. And I pray for all of the children and grandparents and moms and dads and uncles and aunts and loved ones and friends who are ill and all who have died and are grieving this day. I pray for all in our own state of Maine, the 417 people yesterday who got COVID and five more deaths, all a story and all a heartbreak for the people of Afghanistan in a time of turmoil and transition and prayers for our own country, prayers for our democracy, Prayers that we might remember who we are and whose we are. So that we might move forward and make a land and be a people and a community. A great gathering of family and friends who are the very people who God you need us to be in these most challenging times. And we thank you for the gift of Jesus who always walks beside us and before us and who invites us to pray. Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to thank again you joining us this morning for our worship service. And thanks to Ron Ross. Thanks to our singers, Ella Long, Joanna Nino, Lucy Schmidt, thanks to Jeannie O'Connell, thanks to Cole Heisen and Tom Dewey for their support behind the scenes so that we can share this service together. And thank you for all of you for taking this time to pause in your day so we can be together as church. In a time of such need and a time of such promise, let's wonder together, what now is ours that we can offer? Well, we look forward to gathering together in person um, as a church community on May 23rd after church, 12 to 2, up at the Railway Village for a fellowship gathering. And we look forward to the anticipated public worship gathering um, on May 30th. And as I said before, 
I appreciate all of us taking a time in this time of such change to just pause and remember of what we have learned from this time that we don't want to forget. to remember that there is always light. As long as we are brave enough to see it, as long as we are brave enough to be it. May God grant you the grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for the sake of something good, and grace to remember to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And may the love and light and power of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, burn brightly within you and go ever before you from this time forth and forever and evermore. Amen. <laughs>